Don't spoil the ending. What would you rather do? Start at the beginning. Okay, fine. Six months ago, I started learning how to make pots. I learned most of the basics and was ready to take on a challenge. Then, I was playing Breath of the Wild and I noticed something I didn't notice before. It turns out each town has its own interactive pot. So that's when I decided I'm going to make every single pot from every village and every city in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Beginning with Hatena Village. We're gonna make these pots using this big block of white cheese. This clay will give us a perfect off-white color after it's fired, and it's also really smooth, which I find to be easier to throw with. I'm separating the clay into balls of around one to two pounds each. This should give us a good variation in sizes. Oh, wow! Now that we have all our balls of clay ready to go, we can start throwing them. I don't mean that kind of throwing. I'm talking about the old English kind. Throwing. The key here is to show who's boss. Who are you? Center the clay like the well-behaved compound of silicates that it is. What? Don't embarrass me. Plunge a hole through the center of the clay, which will give you ample room to start pulling walls up. Keep pulling until the thickness rises to the top and you're left with nice thin walls. Now choke the top so that it has a nice taper. Then take a device called a rib and finalize the shape. Sometimes you have to get dirty and use your fingers too. Don't forget to go back and clean the mess you just made. Very impressive. Now that we've finished throwing the pots, we're gonna let them dry for about a week and then trim them. But first, you may have noticed in Hatena Village that some of the pots have lids. Why do they have lids? I don't know, I mean, they look a bit like an urn. Maybe they store bow cobbling guts and ashes in them. Anyway, they have them, so we're throwing them. We're gonna make the lids the same way we made the pots, but with a smaller ball of clay. Center the clay, then stick your finger in it. Then take a blade and carve the edges. Keep carving until you have the right size. Whoever you are, please stop. Once again, well, Done. Remove it and do it three more times. I was going to do that anyway. The lids are thrown, but we still have to make the handles that go inside them. And we can't do that until they dry out a little bit. So I'm gonna wait a couple days. Also, I'll take control of the narration from here on out. I'll start by flattening a piece of clay. Oh my word, you're crushing it. That's because I'm using a slab roller and it's meant to flatten it. And I thought I was savage. Now I'm making a stencil and test fitting it into the lid. Don't forget to use 75 pound bright white copy paper. That detail doesn't matter. Just cut the shapes out to the right size. The clay is still a bit moist, so I'm using a heat gun to get it at the same dryness level as the lids. What on earth is that? That's a cora. It's so adorable, I could str- Now I'm taking a rib with a serrated edge to score the two parts. This loosens up the clay and makes for a much stronger bond when you add slip and push them together. Now I'm filling in all the gaps and making the lid look like one solid piece. Using a damp sponge helps a lot. And the lids are nearly done. Next is the part I probably dread the most, trim. You're basically taking a knife edge and pressing it into your pot while it's spinning. Every time I do this, at least one pot goes flying across the room. But we're gonna do our best to not let that happen. But it would be amazing if it did. Adding some slip to the bottom will help it stick to the wheel bat. I'll know if this pot was ready to trim because the trimmings will come off in nice, long shapes. Trimming is when I finalize the shape and silhouette of the pot. It's a scary process, but if all goes well, it can also be the most satisfying. You know, you can't ignore me forever. I left the base extra thick, so I'm trimming the bottom to match the angle of the rest of the pot. I also want the base to be concave instead of flat, so I'm trimming deep in the center and rising up as I get close to the edge. I'm 
going to be glazing the bottom, so I'm burnishing it to keep a buttery smooth finish. All that's left is stamping in the maker's mark. Six putts, all trimmed, no accidents. Now we just need to let the pots dry for about another week under some plastic, at which point we'll finally be able to glaze them. This is new. So, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom just came out while we were waiting for the pots to dry. Now while I contemplate whether I would rather have a luxury mushroom getup or live a quaint farm life, we're gonna get started on glazing these pots. <gasps> I'm applying wax to the parts of the pot that I want to leave bare. The Hatuna Village pots are blue with what I'm interpreting as mountains all around them. Underglaze is not the easiest thing to get off if you mess up, so I'm using a regular pencil to sketch out the design first. Underglaze differs from regular glaze because it can be applied to bone dry clay. It's also a great way to achieve detailed designs. It's like working with paint. It doesn't run, and you can even mix your own colors. After painting in the mountains and white dots, I'm applying a teal color to the entire pot. I put wax on the design elements so that the wet underglaze can't dry on those parts and I can easily wipe it off with a sponge. Once these steps are repeated for each pot, they can go in the kiln for their first bisque firing. This means they're going to reach temperatures upward of 1,945 degrees Fahrenheit. This also means the pots have hardened, but not fully so they can still accept glaze. I'm using a sponge to apply some more watered down underglaze. I'm hoping to achieve the same in-game effect. The Hatuna Village pots are not perfect. They have sort of a muddy appearance to them. It's a bit splotchy, so I'm trying not to pay too much attention to where I'm applying it. To be honest, I may have overdone it on a few pots. I'm applying wax to the base of the pot because the next step is brushing clear glaze over everything including the lids. The last step after putting glaze on all the pots is putting it in the kiln for its final firing, which I'll go into more details about in a future episode. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for has finally arrived. The pots are finished. There. It's been a while. You probably thought I was gone, but I can't be gone because I'm inside you and it's my turn now. <laughs> And I love them. I love them so much that going I'm going to destroy, to destroy them. Destroy them.